Welcome back everyone, Tina here. And in this video, I'm excited to share with you that you can now set up private integrations into your account. What are private integrations? Well, private integrations allow you to build powerful integrations between your account and any third party app. So if you're looking to integrate your account with any third party app, you have two options. Number one, find and install the relevant app from the marketplace. Or number two, build your own private integration by yourself or with the help of a developer using APIs. And private integrations, this new feature will help you to implement option two to build your own private integration by yourself or with a developer really securely. The two key advantages of using private integrations are it's simple and it's secure. Simple means you can easily generate private integration tokens from your account and manage them with ease from there. And secure means you get to restrict the scope or the permissions your developer has access to in your account. So what's the difference between private integrations and API keys? Well, again, private integrations are much more secure because like I just said, you can set the permissions and the scope of who has access to what inside of your account versus API keys, a developer gets unrestricted access to your entire account. Private integrations are state of the art because they allow you to access API version 2.0 versus API keys are really outdated as they can only access API version 1.0, which is no longer maintained. And lastly, private integrations also supports many more features such as web webhooks, for example, and API version one has limited features and does not support webhooks. So who can actually create private integrations inside of your account? Well, pretty much all of your account admins. However, you can restrict this permission at the user level. Let me show you how to do this. First, you want to click on settings on the bottom left, then select my staff, select any staff member, click the edit button, click on roles and permissions, and under calendars, you'll find the option integrations, check mark this or turn it off. Now let's set up a private integration. Scroll down on the left, click on private integration. Click on create new integration. Here you can give it a name. Then you can give it a description. Click on next. And here you can determine the scope, meaning how much permission the third party app or the developer has to change to access or to read data within your account. As it says here, it's recommended to grant just a few scopes as necessary for better account security. So click the drop down menu and select what you need. For example, edit calendars, view calendars, and view calendar events. Okay. If this is our private integration, let's hit create. And here the system created a private key for you. Please make sure to copy this right now because later on you will not be able to access it again. So click copy. And again, the system is telling you this token can be used to view or update account data, right? So please share this token with trusted parties only and do not share it publicly. And now you can share this token with your developer. Let's X this out for now. Now here you can see the private integration has been set up. Now you may be wondering what are the best practices to main security for your private integrations? Well, it's recommended that you rotate your access token every 90 days for the better account security. If you choose rotate and expire this token later, this will give your third party app developer seven days time to update their token on their end. So in the meantime, the old token will continue to work for an additional seven days. Then you just click this button and the system will warn you again, hey, this token will expire after seven days and will give you a new replacement token. If you want to go ahead, just click continue. If you wish to cancel, just click cancel. Let's cancel for now. Let's talk about rotate and expire this token now. If you believe your token has been compromised and somebody else got access to it, the rotate and expire this token now option is a must. By clicking this, it will expire the token immediately and give you a replacement token. Click on it and the system asks you for confirmation one more time. Is this really what you want to do? This token will expire immediately. Hit continue and here is a new replacement token. Click copy again because later on again, it will not be visible anymore. So if you click on the back button right here, it brings you back to the private integrations list in case you have several. If you wanted to edit the private integration after you've created it, you can do that by clicking on the three dots right here. Click on edit and you can change the name and the description right here. Once you've done that, click next, and you can also go ahead and change the scope of the private integration. After you've changed the scope, removed some access, added a different one, hit update, and your private integration has been updated. Let's go back to the list. If you no longer need the private integration, you can also just delete it. Click the three dots right here and click delete, and it will be gone. That's it already. This is how you set up private integrations. Now, maybe you're running an e-commerce store and you're looking to manage your stock much more efficiently, maybe in real time, you can use private integrations to pull that data. If the integration, for example, helps you to provide real-time data on inventory levels, it helps you to ensure that accurate stock information is always available. So if you're running out of items, you already know that way before you do, so you can be sure to order enough stock when the clients are ordering again. I will see you in the next video.